All right. Good morning. It is Thursday, March 25th, and we are returning to JRH2, which is our joint resolution, sincerely apologizing um, and expressing sorrow um, uh, regarding the eugenics policies and practices that we um, put into place in the 20th century. We have received quite a bit of testimony on this. We have received, we did a quite a bit of good work on this at the end of last week on, on adding material. And where we left it was with version 2.1, which uh, Michael Chernick has provided for us on our website. And we have a series of bracketed materials that we did not want to make a decision on last Friday, but we had made some decisions, but we just left it um, that we would return to this today and see how close we are when we go through the bracketed material to finishing our work on writing this apology. Um, so we have, um, does everybody have access to this or do you want it shared up on the screen? Do you want me to share it up on the screen? Yes, please. I was going to say, I find it easier if we can all see each other, but that's okay. Whichever, if people need it up there, that's fine. All right. Chip, do you want to still see it up on the screen? Well, my iPad's on the charger. <laughs> and Mary said she would. It's fine. It's fine. See, okay. okay. I can see it. But make the um, print if you can. And so in this case, again, remind, remember that I can't see everybody. Um, if they're... You know, if, if we're just conversational and you want to chime in, that's fine. If we get into like lengthy things, just raise your hand. I mean, we're, we do really well with the raising hands here in this committee. I, I appreciate that very much. But when I, when I, um, if I can't see you, like I, I like to see everybody as well because I get to monitor people's body language or if their hands are half up or something like that. So, um, all right, give me a second here. I don't think right. we're live either. Is that intentional? Yeah, we're live. We're live. Oh, okay. All right. Can oh, you see that? Are. Can you see the can you see the document? No, not yet. How about now? Yes. All right. So page I just one. have to say and then I'll stop talking, but I don't see the live insignia that usually indicates to me that we are live. So I, I, that's fine if it's my I glitch. See, I see it. It's here. Okay. It's up there. Okay. I see it too. Just so you know, I, I check the live stream to make sure it's working when we start. All right. Um, so let's just scroll through. Here, the first bracketed material is the first resolve, or is the first whereas. Um, it's bracketed, I believe. Well, what what's your pleasure? Uh, Representative Triano got a hand up. I do. I think I spoke last week uh, about the historic value of this. Um, of this uh, clause, this whereas, um, just, um, you know, the, again, the term Vermont State Hospital for the insane. And we know that it was not only the insane that were uh, lodged there, it was um, people that, um, children or uh, adults that um, towns didn't want to care for, spend money to care for, and many other people. And uh, so, you know, I think it has value in the historic pr perspective as to weigh the way things progressed um, as to the end result here. So I would be in favor of keeping this. Thank you. I think we had consensus on this one to keep. Okay. Tommy, you had your hand up for a second. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, I'm just not in favor of making uh, resolutions into novels. And so, you know, I'm okay either way, deleting or leaving this one in. Okay. Noted. No novelization. Um, uh, Representative Parsons. 
Uh, thank you, Chair. I just would follow with Representative Waltz on that. I, uh, I'm going to support whatever we come out with on this, but it really has turned into a bit of a novel here instead of just a pretty clear, concise apology. So I'm probably not going to make my point 50 more times, but there it is. Okay. Um, Representative Murphy. Thank you. I was just going to actually be in support of this one because I think it is the only one that speaks to it, even predating 1900. It's it's setting a stage of the longevity of this process. Um, but I will in the future. There's future ones that I would suggest are redundant and excessive. Okay. So um, I'm not going to. Um, so well, Michael's taking notes. It's Michael, you just take notes and then you'll reflect them back to us after we get I, through. I am for right now, I'm putting the word keep next to that, to this clause, based upon sure. what I heard. Okay. Um, all right, I'm on page two now, line four, where we had bracketed discredited and also, um, I think we had a, I, I think the consensus was again, people, people, you, you all share. I, I don't want to test my memory now. Um, Barbara. Well, I don't remember what our decision then was, but I would suggest we remove discredited because again, it's when he established it, it was not. And I, 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 I think that it's just setting the stage and, and I understand the the desire to just dis, say that we went, we didn't believe in it in the end, but I, it wasn't discredited when it was established. And this is a statement about it being established. Representative Walls. Well, mute. Okay. Yes, I would suggest we replace discredited with controversial uh, because clearly it was not unanimous uh, and there were strong, strong opposition, I think from the very beginning about the, the science of the whole Perkins initiative. Um, Representative Hango. Thank you. Well, I was going to agree wholeheartedly with Representative Murphy, but um, Representative Walsh brings up a very good point. So I'm neutral on it now. Representative Kalaki, then Murphy. Well, I, I think taking out discredited is, is good and, and I wouldn't put another adjective in front of it. Uh, Representative Murphy. I would echo Representative Kalecki. I think that, um, again, this is a statement and you're adding uh, an emotion, which is fine if that's where we're going, but I think we're just laying groundwork. And I think that um, the facts, just the facts, ma'am. Representative Triano, then Pulasic. No, I, I'm not, I don't have any strong feelings either way, although I do think um, a descriptive adjective um, does have a place in that. And uh, maybe Tommy's uh, term is a little bit better than discredited, or Perkins established the now discredited eugenics survey, uh, indicating that when it was established, it was not discredited, but uh, it is at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, I th uh, go ahead, uh, Representative Plasic. Yes, he just stole my uh, thunder on that one. <laughs> I, I think uh, now discredited is good or delete it entirely. I can go either way. Okay. Um, Representative Howard. Mute. Mute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. Um, either um, say now discredited or, um, you know, leave it out. Either way is fine. Representative Murphy. I think that adding the word now goes back to my initial issue with it and, and clarify. So if, if folks would like the adjective, I think that's a great resolution and we can go on to another bracket. All right, Representative Parsons. I was just going to say to get rid of it altogether. 
Okay, we are all over the map. So um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, Michael. Well, no, we're gonna we're we've reviewed it. So I'm just let's just review it. Let again let Michael take the notes, and then we're gonna speed through it again and make the final decision. Right, right, right now, Mr. Chair, I have the words now discredited with a question mark next to it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and we'll we'll go through it and and do the final edit. Um, Sans emotion and intellect. Um, so the uh, representative Bloomley. Hi, Chair. I was I was actually moving on to the next bracket. Line six. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, I would strike mental because I think that deficiency is a broader word and and it's apt given given the history. And it also is alliterative: delinquency, dependency, and deficiency. Anyway, yeah. and, and that was the three D's. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a, I think there's a, um, I understand why mental deficiency was in there because it's referred to that way as well. But I think the three D's is, is much um, cleaner. Chair, are these, were these Perkins's three D's? And so should those three D's then be in quotes? The three D's were used by everybody. Okay. Because they're, they're words that meant something then, but they mean something different now. So I don't. I think in the context of our presentation, that will be understood. Okay. And, and, you. and you know, so it's, but I, I do think the three Ds, everybody refers to them as that um, throughout okay. all the paperwork. All right, line seven. Representative Murphy. I had a realization, which I'm sorry, because it's words that aren't being offered in bracket. And I know we've kind of tried to get down to choices, but um, Judy Dow kept speaking of French Indian, not French Canadian heritage and not Native American Indian heritage, but French Indian. Mm -hmm. And I think that somehow if we, if we want to include the Abenaki, which I, I appreciate and understand and think we do, potentially figuring out how to also include French Indian. So, you know, adding a few words in this one, but I just want to say that that really was, it finally echoed for me that that's what she kept saying was, we saw ourselves and we're seen as French Indian. The border didn't, you know, it was a crossing. And mm -hmm. so I, I just offer that to muddy the waters. Well, it's, yes. Um... I mean, this is a, this is a, it's a good point. I mean, and I think it speaks to everything that we've talked about on this issue from erasure to inclusion or exclusion. It's just, it's, a, so let's just put it out there as a, as a thought. Um, Representative Trano. You know, that caught my attention as well. And I was wondering if, you know, up on the border, um, particularly up here in the Northeast Kingdom, um, there were a lot of intermarriages between Native Americans and French Canadians. And I was wondering if that was not what she was referring to. I, I, I can't say for sure, but that is, was one of my thoughts when I heard that term French Indian um, and that it may have been um, <clears throat> a combination of uh, French and Canadian or uh, uh, Canadian and uh, French and, uh, and Indian uh, descendants. So I, I'm not sure. I don't feel strongly um, either way about that. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, the history, the, the history, of course, borders were fluid between Quebec and here, first of all. Um, you know, the history shows that after the big contraction after, and we're talking in the 1600s, you know, the contraction brought people, you know, maybe there were not as many permanent settlements, but that, the, you know, the Odenaks in Quebec were the primary group of, of Native Americans in, in Southern Quebec. Um, and yes, there was lots of intermarriage. You know, the question, the question that, were, that is unanswered in the uh, materials, I think, is, is identifying people, I think, we know that the population in Vermont was, was especially in the Northwestern quadrant, was very highly French Canadian. Um, 
it was also French Indian. Um, you know, whether those Indians were considered uh, uh, Odinac or or any group, any other group, I guess is is less clear to us. So uh, again, just throwing out little bits and pieces here to, as Barbara said, to muddy the waters a little bit. Um, Representative Blumley. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so if I'm remembering what Nancy Gallagher said and um, Judy Dow said, it might be more historically accurate to say um, Vermonters of Native American Indian heritage, among whom were those who now identify as Abnaki. Um, <clears throat> as opposed to the past. As, as opposed to who identified at the time as Abnaki, because that, you know, the point was made that the word Abnaki didn't appear in the documents that they examined. And that <clears throat> and and so and, and then we have recognized Abnaki as Native American bands who live here in Vermont, um, and I and it just it seemed to me that that would square more with what uh, both of them testified to. Mr. Chair, okay. yeah. If yes, I may, Michael. just with respect to the last comment, if you decide to make that reference, would you want to say whose descendants now identify? Because they obviously hmm. weren't al alive, the same persons weren't alive right. uh, 100 years ago who are uh, alive now. I just make that comment. Um, that's, that is a reasonable um, that is a reasonable option, I believe. Representative Walsh, then Kalecki. Uh, okay, I think uh, Michael just took care of one issue I was gonna bring up. <laughs> I'm also wondering about the Native American Indian. Isn't that redundant? Don't we normally refer to Indians as Native Americans and who else? Are we referring to as well? Native? Actually, at that time, um, many of the settlers referred to themselves as natives. Representative Walsh, that language comes directly from the statute. Okay, from, from uh, Title One, from the Native, uh, from the Native American Commission chapter. I took that verbatim. Okay, that's fine then. But I. You know, when we say Native Americans, I think we normally know who we're talking about, even though, you know, your ancestors may have arrived in the 1600s, you're still not considered a Native American. Except when you okay. say that you are. Yeah. You. Representative Kalaki. Thank you. I, you know, I, I think it's important to just keep it as including among those who identified as Abenaki, because we heard a lot of different kinds of testimony on that. And Chief Stevens was saying, well, it was the Abenaki region just because the people doing the survey didn't use the term we did. And so I, I think I like the idea of the French Indian, Indian as well uh, to be added there, but I, I don't like diluting down the power of the word Abenaki in there. Representative Parsons, I saw your hand up for a minute. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just curious here, considering the, the start of this is that they targeted, and I thought we had heard from Nancy, Ga um, yeah, Nancy Gallagher and Judy Dow and others, that they really didn't, they just targeted anyone who looked Indian, really. That was, it wasn't specifically mentioned that they were targeting Abenaki and that um, one thing I'd say is um, there's other, certainly other tribes that were, um, that were affected by it. And I'm just concerned that we are using Abenaki because we've heard from um, Chief Stevens and others that they'd wanna be included, but we haven't heard from um, other tribe members that would to say, they're okay with being considered others or if they'd like their tribe mentioned as well. So 
So I'm just in the um, Well, that's fine. You know, we recognize, we, we as a state recognize for um, tribal bands. We also recognize that there are others um, who are not, who are not affiliated with bands. Chair, your email is on the screen now. Oh, I did that again. I'm so sorry. The newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where I. It, I'm sorry. I totally started spacing out again. I don't like. I don't like sharing screen. Isn't this your job? <laughs> Jerry, isn't this your job? Um, we kind of like you sharing it. We get to see what else you're doing. <laughs> unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> unbelievable. Um, no, I think I. Well, we're all over the map on this one. So I just, I, I think we need to think hard on what we really want to put on this on line seven here. Um, you know, so we've heard that to not change it, we've heard to um, among whom were those among, among whom there are those whose descendants are, are identified as Abenaki. Um, we've heard adding French Indian. Um, are we coming back to this? Or can we come up with a resolution before we before we scroll on? All right, I don't see anyone. Um, so we're going to scroll on and come back to this. Um, so going into the next um, bracketed material, I am on page three. Line seven. And the end of that reads irreversible impacts that still persist in the lives of the targeted groups and especially the descendants of the families who are personally or directly impacted. And I guess personally or directly is a choice. Um, Representative Murphy. I'm, I'm torn on this one because I definitely think that the next whereas after uh, two down is one that we should remove in its entirety and it kind of connects back to this so whether we remove both maybe that feels too too much of a loss to folks that would like this really um identified as this is the current that this is really happening um but I just think that if we go back to that, yeah, I think that it, it again, there's some redundancy going on. Um, I think we added, I think we added that line seven and eight as a, as a, as a way of being okay with deleting the other one. That's what I'm thinking that I, yeah. I don't know that we want to remove all of it. Um, I, I think that it is certainly a better option than having the other whole paragraph that just gets off on a trail. Um, And I, 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 agree. I agree. I think that this was, again, I, I think we added this so that we could, so that we could cut the next one without feeling like it was ignoring the point being made in it. Mm -hmm. What if we, what if we offered in the lives of the targeted groups and especially their descendants? Period. That I, I mean, that can work for me. Um, personally, Representative Blumley. No, oh, I <clears throat> that was going to be my suggestion, and I, I I like the inclusion of this language because it it is it gets personal, and it's it it's not just kind of at arm's length, um, right. an idea. So, um, any other thoughts on? So what's on the table here is inc is including this language, except perhaps putting a period after descendants and making it read, especially their descendants. Is that satisfactory? And again, remember, mm -hmm. I can't see you. So um, if I don't- A lot of thumbs going up, at least on the four I see. <laughs> yeah, okay. thumbs up. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Michael, so line eight will read targeted groups and especially their descendants, period or I'm sorry, their descendants, comma, and? So noted, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So that means lines 14 through 19 
are deleted. Yeah. But, you know, I, I want to recognize in our committee that the work we're doing on this impact of the healthcare committee, because that's the language they put in their bill that we passed last night or we voted on last night, health, health disparities. So, yep. you know, it, it is a way of saying that we're kind of influencing each other here. So I think it's to take it out is the right thing. Okay. I agree. I think it served its purpose and, and now they'll, they'll be that tie through, but I don't think we have to repeat it all. Right. Okay, scrolling down on page four, then we get to, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, you guys had this conversation. I'm just gonna go back to my email. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here we are at line 10. And um, I think where we left this, well, you tell me where we left this. We had choices here, Representative Murphy. Well, I'll say what I think I heard, which may just be what I wanted to hear. But um, I think that um, leaving the comma after disenfranchisement, uh, removing the erasure and, then having ethnocide, and then and genocide. So disenfranchisement, ethnocide, and genocide. Because ethnocide is erasure. So we can't. I don't believe we should use both those words. And I think if people are more comfortable with erasure and that is the one we heard, then disenfranchisement, erasure, and genocide would be the three. But anyway, that's my offer. And we, I believe the conversation went to ethnocide and genocide rather than leading to genocide because what we learned was that um, ethnocide is a culture, um, is cultural, and genocide is is human effect um, or physical effect. Um, that was, was that was the differentiation there. So that that both using both of those words or concepts, if it's erasure, is accurate. Yeah, and thank you. I'm sorry. I was just going to say I think that if we do use erasure, then ethnocide and genocide both actually could be removed. That could be disenfranchisement and erasure because of culture and people, but. Now I'll stop. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go with how I've, I, I don't know who was next. Uh, so I'm just going top to bottom on my screen, Representative Triano, then Walls. Yes, I, I agree with uh, Barbara. I think that erasure and ethnocide are uh, redundant. And uh, so we erasure. I think ethnocide is a more descriptive term, um, which would be better used in this situation. So I would be in favor of removing erasure and leaving the other terms. Representative Walsh. I'll second that. I, I believe the same thing for the same reason. We should delete erasure. Ethnocide is, is more specific. And I would, so I would remove erasure and include ethnos, ethnocide and genocide. Representative, thank you. Representative Hengo and then Bloomley. Um, I don't really have a strong feeling about erasure and uh, disenfranchisement and erasure versus ethnocide and genocide, but I do have concerns still about the whole clause, the whole resolved clause in that it directs a further legislature, uh, a future legislature to take further action and that really gives me pause. Okay, so noted. Representative Bloomley, then Byron. Yeah, I was the one that actually um, uh, suggested erasure and um, I'm not even sure if it was for this line. I would take it out and, um, and as others suggested, just say and ethnocide, ethnocide and genocide. Okay, Representative Byron, then Howard. I'm simply going to concur with the ethnocide genocide language. Um, everybody has already said what my mind was going to say. So thank you. And Representative Howard. Thank you. Yes, I agree with um, uh, what uh, Representative Byron had just said. Thank you. 
All right, any further? Uh, Representative Palasic. Yeah, I've been putting my uh, thumbs up. I'm not sure how well it's working, but I, I like that last part. Uh, let's get rid of the word erasure. And I okay. like the surprisement uh, when the other, just the other few words is it, perfect. All right, thank you. No, I didn't see your thumbs up again. I'm Now I'll see you if you put your thumbs up for the next 10 minutes until the- Well, no, your... it's, the, the thumbs up is, you know, just I'm agreeing with something, but it's so yeah. close. I'm, I'm looking at the screen. It, I can already tell the difference myself, so I, why I spoke up. All right, thank you for that. Um, so Michael, you have that. I think the I think the consensus is clear that um, that uh, this is this should be re reading related practices of disenfranchisement, comma ethnocide and genocide. Right, and there's a comma after F. We use serial commas in the Ledge Council, so it would read di uh, disenfranchisement, dis disenfranchisement, comma ethnocide, comma and genocide. Period. Okay. <clears throat> Scrolling back to page one, we agreed we'll be keeping, or the consensus was anyway, that we'll be keeping the first paragraph. Um, we agreed on page two on line six to get rid of mental, established the, um, I mean, I'm, this is, this is the word that I brought up. I don't know that it's necessary. I think that by the time we get to ethnocide and genocide, it's clear that it's a discredited policy. Um, and so I guess my, my uh, thumbs up or thumbs down, and you'll have to tell me, of course, what the consensus is, is that we cut the word um, and just have established the eugenic survey. Can someone report back to me that there's a general thumbs up on that? Thumbs up? Want us all to raise our hands or something? I, I can't see you. I just, that's the whole thing. I can't see you when I'm sharing screen. So if everybody screams yes or no. Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I. <laughs> okay. Yes. I. <laughs> yes. I concur. Thank you, John. Thank you, for me. <laughs> Thank you, John, for the yes check. We'll get that down by next year. Um, and then I believe we're only left with lines seven and eight. And um, so let us say that um, Vermonters of Native American Indian heritage, Michael, what was the next piece of language that you had attached to that? Uh, it read in brackets, Vermonters of Native American heritage, among whom were those who, and then there had been some suggestions in the last round, whose descendants now identified as Abenaki. And then this mixed, uh, that part was in brackets, the Vermonters, and then language mixed racial heritage or French Canadian and Representative Murphy, I believe, uh, or someone uh, uh, suggested the idea of French Indian, though there wasn't a distinction where the French Canadian stayed in if you put in French Indian. So we have the phrase mixed racial heritage, which um, also encompasses, we, we took testimony and there is some literature in, in the boxes that talk about um, descendants of slaves, that, there's a, that there was a group of, of of um, black Vermonters that were descended from um, from slaves that we I think have were implying inclusion by mixed racial heritage because I believe they were referred to um, as mixed race as mulatto and other words. Um, so just uh, Representative Hango comment. Yes, thank you. Um, I. I would like to keep in the Native American Indian heritage um, as well 
um, as the descendants identifying as Abenaki. The mixed racial heritage, I, I agree with you, Mr. Chair, that there was mention of um, descendants of slaves who then intermarried. So I think we need to keep that. I definitely think we need to keep the French Canadian heritage because the book is just liberally sprinkled with references to French mm -hmm. Canadians. Um, and um, I do believe we need to mention also French Indian, which was brought up a number of times in testimony. Um, and I would be willing to take out then after that where it says among others, because I don't know what others, unless you're now referring to cultural groups such as um, uh, religions, Catholics, who were also targeted in one way or another. So I don't know if that among others is necessary. It's getting to be quite a long descriptive clause. Oh, and there were also the Italians who were um, discriminated against, but you know, I don't think we need the among others. I, and I do think we need to add French Indian in there. Representative Trina, thank you. Representative Trina. I think we uh, we put in uh, and others um, from uh, Judy's request that there were other uh, native uh, tribal people that uh, are not included when we identify Abenaki. Well, I guess Native American heritage could cover that. But um, that's why I thought that that language went in there. Um, and. Uh, I think it. I think it spoke to. I think it spoke to the fact that there, there is some evidence that you could probably pull out people who were Polish or Italian or Irish. I mean, though the Irish were pretty well established in Burlington anyway at the time, um, but that they were not a significant number of the people who were targeted. Um, they were among the people who were targeted, but they weren't, I mean, the, these, the groups that we mentioned were almost all specifically mentioned as targets at some point. Well, I, I, I'm keeping in mind that, um, according to Nancy, that, you know, there were situations in which, um, people, uh, uh, particularly children were taken into custody that did not match, um, well, or were solely poor and did not actually have disabilities uh, and were taken into custody as well. So um, I'm not sure if that includes them as well uh, and in that. You know, I mean, people, people were taken in who really were just a burden on the town, on the town's uh, finances uh, oftentimes. And, uh, Put into Waterbury or Brandon uh, as a result of that. So I'm not sure that, you know, among others, is not accurate. Okay, Representative Kalecki. Yeah, I, I like keeping among others, uh, and you know, poor is in their chip. I just want you to see, but I, I think among others, because the other factor that I heard was that uh, the initial survey is actually targeted families who had someone in prison. And, and so, you know, it gets a, a wide swath here of, of people. So I think it's, it's not a definitive list and that's why I think among others is important. I do agree with um, Representative Hango about all the other things about keeping them in though. I think if we can get French Indian in, in there as well, um, and that's, not the same as French Canadian. I think it's that some of them may be, but um, th then I'd be happy with it. All right, um, Chipper, you go. Did you put your hand go back up? I did. I think that um, I would concur with John, um, keeping all that other language, um, but while keeping among others, um, I think that covers a lot. And, and, and adding French Indian. And yes, adding French Indian. I think that would be fine. Okay, thank you. Representative Walsh, then Bloomley, and then Pulaski. I agree on the, with the previous speakers, and I have, uh, again, uh, a recommendation uh, to include the French Indians. We can put it in that phrase, Vermonters of Native American, uh, Native American Indian heritage, among whom 
were those who identified as French Indian or Abenaki. I think we could sneak it in there. Okay, thank you. Um, Representative Bloomley. Um, alternatively, we could say Vermonters of Native American <clears throat> or French Indian heritage. All right, Representative Polasic, then Hango. Tommy, are you, did you have your hand back up? All right, Representative Polasic, then Hango. Okay, I'm, I'm getting, we're getting a lot of different words uh, pro and con here, but I don't have a big, personally, I don't have a big issue with, with most of them, except I do agree with, uh, I think, four or five of us so far that the uh, French Indian need to be put in there. So if it said something like French Canadian and French Indian heritage, that would, that should cover that, that uh, issue right there. I'm still, you know, uh, I, we got to keep the word Abnaki in there. That's a, that's a gimme. And the rest of it, I think it pretty, pretty much uh, go with. Okay, Representative Hango. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, I am going to agree with Representative Kalaki to leave the among others because, you know, thinking about what I read in the book that there were other populations that were targeted and I think Representative Troiano said something about that too. I would like to leave among others in there. Um, I don't care for some of the suggestions of where to put French Indian, but I think after or French Canadian comma, or French Indian heritage, because French Canadian and French Indian, although they may sound alike, are completely different because not all Quebecers intermarried with Indians, nor did all um, Quebecers intermarry with English. Um, so I think they are two very distinct um, heritages. So um, I just would like to see if Mr. Chernick could come up with some nice flowing language so this just doesn't sound like a run-on sentence. Thank you. All right. Representative, thank you. Representative Trial. I would concur with that. Um, I think that um, I agree French Canadian and French Indian are two very uh, different and specific uh, heritages. So um, and I do think that um, if uh, Michael could put in some good language um, where he thinks it belongs, uh, I would be in favor of that. Representative Hango. Yes, thank you. My hand is back up because I have a comment that I've been wanting to make for a little while. And that is that, um, you know, after reading the book again and listening to all the discussion we've had, I still find it very difficult to believe that the, the um, first take at this last biennium at this apology did not include French Canadian and we had not taken any testimony on um, the French Canadian influence uh, on the influence of this on French Canadians. And now we're also adding French Indians. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that COVID interrupted our um, work on this. Um, I feel like we've had so much more time to think about it and get this right. So um, I just want to just mention that I appreciate the extra time to add those groups back it, into um, this resolution. Yeah, I think we all do. I think it's, it's um... And I think it really points to the word erasure, you know, where, where in this particular case that there's a, a feeling that it happened. I mean, this is the sense I got from the witness who came and testified is that it happened and they weren't really allowed to talk about it anymore. And because the French Canadian, the French, the Vermonter French Canadians, have all been very much a part of our lives as long as we've all lived here, really. They weren't, I mean, it was always a, a part of, the French Canadian names were always a part of Vermont 
um, history in the 20th century, especially, you know, it just speaks to, you know, being able to find that voice and have it acknowledged is really, it can't, yes, I'm glad, I'm glad we took the time. I'm glad we were able to take the time to get there. Representative Triano, then Murphy. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think um, we did try to reach out to the um, um, French Canadian Association, I think, or there's some, there was someone last year and we didn't get anyone in. So I am also very happy that we were able to hear from folks uh, about this and, um, and to feel much uh, better about including uh, the inclusiveness that uh, we're looking at the, in this uh, section here. So thank you. Representative Murphy. I just wanted to say I'm very thankful that you all did wait for me to be able to participate in this with you. I, I uh, think I was pretty open about the personal heritage connection I have to it. And it, it's very meaningful to me, more so than just being able to participate as a floor member um, and, and present, pass, pass this through, but really being able to understand the, the depth of this history of our state. And um, as the saying goes, history is written by the winners and it's great to actually get a piece of history being written in its totality. And, and not just um, with things blacked out that we don't like and we don't really want to remember. So really meaningful. And thank you again for all waiting for me to join you. All right. Michael. Yeah, uh, if I may, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, in response to Representative Hangel's uh, comment about uh, the clause being now a run on sentence, which I totally agree. How would it be if I split it at the point and say, whereas this survey and made it a separate whereas clause, just to make it a slightly shorter clause and try to uh, break out this extraordinarily long clause? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Or do so you represent just... Hango? What I am proposing is with all the changes you've made. Uh, it would read, uh, whereas in 1925, University of Vermont zoology professor Henry F. Perkins established the Eugenic Survey of Vermont with the participation of leaders within Vermont state government to collect evidence of alleged delinquency, dependency, and deficiency, comma, and whereas this survey targeted, etc. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah, that, that's, it was that's just, good. It was just staring me in the face just now. Thank um, you. Thumbs up. It, yeah, I think yes. thumbs up. <laughs> and, then, and then if you can certainly add an appropriate place, the French Indian. Um, I was going to suggest, Mr. Chair, I put that uh, it will read mixed racial heritage, French Canadian or French Indian right at the end of the uh, heritage. OK. I, I, I split the sentence in two. What about what about mixed racial heritage, comma French Indian, or French Canadian heritage? Whichever order the committee wants, I'll certainly do. I I think it fits better. I'm sorry, but I think it fits better back with the Abnaki, as I think um, Representative Hango may be offered that it uh, is among within whom those those who are identified as Abenaki and French Indian. Or French, or French exactly. Indian. Okay. That wasn't me, that was Representative Waltz, but oh, I'm, seeing, sorry, I'm seeing it better now. I disagreed at first, but I'm seeing it better now that that's a good place for it. But then I'm still leaving the French Canadian in where it, are, where it is right now. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. Good, Representative Plasic. Yes, I like that. Uh, Mr. Turnick uh, did some of his magic and uh, I think he resolved that issue with those that big long paragraph, making it the two where mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, Representative Clocky. I'm not sure that the bands identified themselves as French Indian. I think that the people surveying, when they saw native peoples who spoke French, identified all of the different tribes as French Indian. So I don't think it's actually correct to say for those who identified as French Indian, because I think that that is um, a, the white person's label 
for all of the different tribes that actually were fr French speaking, a uh, multiple tribe. So uh, just parsing a little bit, I think those who identified as Abenaki is okay, but I, I don't think it's those who identified as French Indian because I think there were still tribal affiliations that were recognized in those bands that were traveling across this uh, Abenaki land who spoke French. So, so, I de so among whom were identified as Abenaki, comma, French Indian, comma, mixed racial heritage? Is that what you're suggesting? Um, hmm. Among who were identified as Abenaki, comma, French Indian, yes, I, that, that, I could work with that. And is that French hyphen Indian? Uh, just, I, I yes. don't know, Michael. Yeah, okay. No. Barbara has her grammar ha grammar hand up. I can tell. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm <laughs> I, I would, well, yeah, sort of. Actually, I think because we were going to go back to that. Um, they they didn't. It's who now identify as. It, I thought we'd removed it from that past tense, because the Abenaki. Right. Okay. Or did we go back and? I know we went back and forth. I, I'm still stuck on whether we're speaking. Well, I think that I think that Abenaki. I don't know. Did Abenaki? I mean, again, this is this gets to the historical issue of of, of um, of how we phrase this. I mean, I, I, it's it's probably right. one of the stickiest things that we're talking about here. Well, I think that if we say Vermonters of Native American Indian heritage, that covers everybody. But then we can say. The, however we word it, that some now, you know, some now identified as, as identify as a Naki and French Indian. I, I don't know. It, I think it's all in there. I just remember. I mean, I mean, the thing is that the survey targeted, right? So it is a past tense situation. It's just a question right. of, um, you know, and I don't think that there's any question. I mean, we have a couple of different histories who, who acknowledge perhaps following along what Chief Stevens said is, is that, you know, it was Abenaki territory, therefore it's easy, you know, it, it's, it's not hard to say that these folks were Abenaki among others. Um, Representative Hango. Um, yes, I think, um... Representative Murphy just brought up a really important point. I wasn't remembering that we were um, going to change that to say something to the effect of among whom were, were those who now identify as Abenaki because that that's something that was brought up to us over and over again that we should do. So I would go with that mixed racial heritage comma French Indian comma or French Canadian heritage as well as the rest of them because I think that will um, that will uh, highlight that even though they were Vermonters of Native American Indian heritage they weren't they didn't identify themselves as French Indian but the survey identified them as a French Indian group. Um, so I think it should be, as Representative Clackey was suggesting, separated from those who now identify as Abenaki, because um, I think they probably referred to themselves as Native American Indians, yes. but the survey takers we're identifying them in all these other groups. And the Abenaki is a more recent term is what we're hearing. So that that's my take on that. Lisa, well, why, I, would, why, why wouldn't French American or French Indian be part of the Native American heritage though, aren't, because I think- it, they, they would be, um, absolutely, but the survey takers specifically identified them as French Indian. Yes. So I think we need to Hi, make that. Good, I'm in a committee meeting. Um, uh, somebody no, needs no, no, to no. mute. Mary, Mary, you need to mute. Yeah, so I think, um, John, that Representative Clackey, I think that we need to 
I recently read the book again, like very recently in the last few days. So this is all really um, standing out in my mind that they were not really called Native Americans or Native American Indians. They were called by the survey takers, French Indians. Um, no, no, I, I, I agree with you. I just think that that is part of the, because even the Canadian border wasn't really recognized uh, the tribes were saying they were just, they were moving. Um, and so I'm just, I, I, I'm not, the only thing I'm, we're, I'm just, we're disagreeing about is where to place it. And right, I think that's what I'm disagreeing about also. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm, I'm actually asking to place it where you asked to place it. I think you said right before mixed racial heritage, and I just wanted to move it one phrase over to right after mixed racial heritage, just to sort of separate it from those who are now identifying themselves as Abenaki, because we don't want people to think that it's those who now identify themselves as French Canadian. I just thought it was too close to the word Abenaki um, and, because and, we're separating out Abenaki as a newer term. And I and and I'm I think Abenaki and French Indian need to be in the Native American Indian Heritage Clause, so that we're, then, we're just disagreeing. So then I would put French Indian before among those who are identified as Abenaki now identify as Abenaki because we're not talking about people who now identify themselves as French Indian. Do you do you follow me on that? Uh, well, well. Chair, could I just play a little bit with this? With or, Vermont yes. has Native American heritage, including French Indians and those who identify as Abenaki. Those who now identify as Abenaki, and I'm with you. Okay, comma, mixed race heritage or French Canadian heritage. So it's there. Perfect. Okay. And, and the only thing I would say about considering Abenaki as a new phrase is that it is actually the historic phrase. It's always been Abenaki territory. Um, it is, but we were being told over and over again by that one witness, and I, I regret I can't remember her name, that they didn't use Judy, Abenaki, yeah. they didn't exist as Abenaki. So that just threw me totally. Yeah, and that's part of what was, you know, then we talk, then we toss in like that's where the word erasure came in, right? Or, you know, is is the idea that they didn't either believe that Abenaki existed or that they that they existed at, on their own and that they were penciled in um, or or put together with French Indians or basket weavers or pirates or gypsies or whatever we've, you know, whatever language we we used. Um, but I think we're getting closer. Um, Representative um, Bloomley. Very quick. I, I just wanted to know whether uh, Michael might be able to come up with a couple of different options reflecting what we have heard um, that might make our conversation the next time around um, a little focused. So we were kind of voting one version up or down. In terms of where, if I may, this uh, represent Stephen, since I'm not sure you can see me. Uh, so I'm getting the impression I should have French Indian in a couple of different places as options. Yes, can you provide us, a, you know, it's separate from this draft on a on just on a, this is the last piece that we're talking about in here, I believe. I believe we've covered right. everything we've else. Right, everything else. And so if you could provide us with, um, even if it's just a simple on one page of paper, clean copy, two sentences, they're, you know, a rewritten whereas, I don't know how best, broken of, of this, yeah, of this, of this whereas, if you could provide us with a couple of different options on that from based on what you've heard as potential pieces, then um, next time we see this, we will, we will. Sure. Um, thumbs up and th or, you know, we'll, we will finish our conversation on it. So committee, I'm going to, I'm going to take us off share screen right now. I just, I've missed you terribly. <laughs> um, so how are we all on this? Are we ready to vote on this tomorrow? Representative Hango? 
Do you have your, did you have your hand up or was yes, that from before? Yes, I do have my hand up. I remain concerned about the second resolved clause. And mm -hmm. I heard Mr. Chernick a couple of meetings ago concur with me that this may, may direct a future legislature. So I don't think we've had a robust enough discussion about that. I would like to hear more about the quote unquote legality of this. Sure, and I think we heard something different from uh, Michael as well. Michael. If I may, <clears throat> if I may as a point of clarification for the record again, it's Michael Chernick for legislative from Legislative Council. If you had the term shall be taken, then clearly it would, <clears throat> then clearly it would be a direction. What you have here is should, which is a suggestion, if I may make an analogy, Mr. Chair and members of the committee, when I write policy resolutions, I often have the language, <clears throat> excuse me, request or urge because a, a, a resolution can't bind. So I never say, for example, that the General Assembly uh, directs that the governor should do ABC or Congress shall pass so-and-so. It's always request or urge. Uh, I could play with that. I could make the should to be urges, if that helps you. The should is not a direct, the should I also view personally uh, as, a, <clears throat> as a suggestion, a strong suggestion, but if you would prefer request or urges versus should, I could certainly rewrite it to that effect. Um, Representative Plastic and Walsh. Uh, I'm just going to refer back to your question if you thought that we we thought it would we could vote on this um, and I would just a uh, personal request uh, I would uh, very much like to be a part of this vote uh, I do have my uh, second COVID uh, vaccination tomorrow afternoon and I have to leave at three o'clock to make that appointment and there you know I'd rather not have to reschedule that so if uh, we could do that, that would be wonderful. And that's just a personal request. Sure. No, I think, I mean, it sounds like we're pretty close. So um, so we will make sure that you are part of the vote. No question. Representative Walsh. Thank, thank you, sir. And, uh, and the only reason I asked that is this is, uh, as I mentioned before, this is something that is uh, very, very special and uh, definitely needs to be done. And I think we're working hard to get it done correctly. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Representative Walsh. Uh, I'd like to address the should question. Uh, first of all, should means ought to, and it doesn't mean the same thing as shall, as Michael Chernick has already pointed out. And secondly, it does not uh, commit to any specific action. It just says should take action. And so perhaps, uh, the issue would go away with something like urge or encourage, but I'm okay with the language as it stands. I think it's fine. Well, and I also think, I, I do think that should is fine. I mean, it was chosen, I think, as a, a, a very carefully, so it's not a shall. Um, but we're also seeing, yesterday we saw a raft of legislation that is um, starting a process or continuing actually a process that's been underway for over a year of, of legislation that's specific to uh, many of the communities that were affected here, if not all of them in some way. And so um, unless there's a case to be made otherwise, um, you know, again, we can have a final discussion on this when we see the next draft, if we if we'd like. I mean, I'm personally comfortable with should. Um, because it's not shall. Um, all right, I wanted to end at 1015 and I just wanted to um, just take a minute. Yesterday was a really long day and it started off with our conversation on H-157 and um, we got pretty, I know I did. Um, and I think I think the committee as a whole or at least most of us got heated in some way about what we felt was um, another committee really not 
treating our work with respect and, um, you know, bringing back work that to us that showed that, that, you know, we've, we felt that we weren't taken seriously in our work. That's what I took. And that's what I, that's, that's what I was triggered on um, for personally. And I got the feeling from us as a whole that that was the case. Um, we're going to vote on this tomorrow. I still don't know what, you know, where appropriations is with this. So we still have a little bit of time before we have to come up to a conclusion on this particular amendment. But, you know, after sleeping on it and listening to yesterday's long, long conversations and about all the work that these committees, these other, the money committees did on other bills, um, I want to appreciate the fact that the changes that they made to our bills, um, uh, the changes that were made were relatively minor in the scheme of things. And they're actually allowing the concept of this to go forward with the fees, which is an integral part of the bill. And so I just want to let you know, I'm kind of relaxed, much more relaxed than, than I was yesterday with what happened. That may not change anyone's vote, but I just, in order to move the vote forward, you know, I, I'm going to support the amendment uh, when we vote on it. And um, I think the bill is important enough to, to, to move forward and, you know, let the legislative process take its, take its place. But I just, I want to acknowledge our work on it and our feelings about it yesterday. Um, Cause it was clear that some of you were, if not as upset as I was, then pretty upset. Um, Representative Murphy. Thank you, Chair Stevens. I um, definitely was one that was very clear about my opinion on this amendment. I, I do think it does harm in, in some aspects. I understand the committee's desire to get something through that you've worked on so long. I would suggest that if possible, um, the exclusion bothers me because it really does confuse the regulation and the registration. And so I think that the exclusion should be they're excluded from the fee, but still have to be on the registration. They have to be on the list because that was the whole process is it puts it into um, a, an area where a person can access it. So anyway, I, 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 I can't even guarantee I'd vote well, actually I could. I could vote for the amendment if we can at least get that change made to it. But otherwise, I just, I, I think it's part of the work we do. We sometimes give up and take the crumb when actually it's better to move on without it. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. Representative Trina. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't terribly upset, but I, it, I, it, um, it registered with me that the particular piece that this amendment contains or addresses um, was a subject of considerable um, conversation and testimony and discussion in this committee. Um, and having sat in on the Ways and Means Committee and, and seen that, you know, someone suggested that this moves up because they didn't like the amount and um, they just did it uh, without any um, testimony or, or discussion to speak of, um, you know, again, it didn't piss me off, but I just said, didn't sit well with me that, um, this just came down like that. I, you know, I, I was there for a good part of the conversation and I was certainly here for the long discussion that took place surrounding, um, that piece of the, uh, of the bill. So, um, you know, uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Representative Hango. Um, I'm in partial agreement with Representative Murphy that I feel like um, we shouldn't really just move on for the sake of moving on. I don't like how the amendment is constructed. Um, so I, I guess um, I will not be supporting it in its current form. Thank you. Okay. Representative Kalaki. Well, I, my, my iris side did get a little worked up yesterday. You may have noticed about this. Uh, but 
you know, I, I have been also thinking about it. And um, I think it's, it's a journey and I am willing to support the amendment. And I feel like we will bring these messages onto the Senate um, and try to get clarification as the, as the bill moves on uh, in its course, if it moves on. Because I fear that if, if, we, if we have a floor fight over this, it, it will take a very long time. And the, I think the bill could be imperiled and I would rather, so anyway, I was probably the angriest or loudest yesterday, but um, I'm a little calmer this morning about it. So right now I'm voting yes for the amendment. Holding my nose a little bit on it. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to acknowledge it and we'll, you know, like I said, I, I don't know when we'll have a vote on it, but um, I don't think we need to hear from Ways and Means any longer. Um, they had offered to come back and, um, but I don't think that we need to, I don't think we need to have any more testimony on the amendment. Um, and I, the only little piece of flotsam, um, I don't know, actually, is it flotsam or jetsam? Uh, jetsam, I don't know, but it's um, it, on this is that, my take is that if you excluded people who were already regulated by the PUC, the question, of course, the question would have been, are you talking about individuals? Or are you talking about companies being registered? You know, and, and does anybody really install net metering on a Saturday gig, you know, on a side gig? Is that really something that you can do as a side gig is hook up electrical equipment, you know, to the outside of the house. But that's, you know, I, I don't know. And I'm going to, I'll check with, with some people. But again, I just wanted to let, I just wanted to get that off my chest because it was bugging me all day yesterday as we were sitting around um, listening to everybody else. And the other thing I'll say, um, actually, Matt, do you want to comment on this? I, I, I mean, I spoke yesterday in my support of it. It still exists. I just wasn't sure if we were going to ask Representative Elder to come in and talk briefly to his mindset that um, language or no. No, because he doesn't really, I mean, he clearly doesn't support the bill in the first place. And, you yeah. know, the word, the word back from Ways and Means is that we would have um, actually probably had um, Representative Kornheiser join us as vice chair, but um, to further explain, you don't really, we really can't, we really can't start saying, you know, hey, we want to pull in anybody who has an opinion against our bill. That's not really good form or protocol um, and, and give them the ninth, you know, or third degree or whatever we would want to call it. But um, we'll, Eric. like I said, we'll, we'll deal with that. We'll review it. Um, Representative Hango. Yes, um, I was not particularly angry or disturbed yesterday because it's kind of a par for the course thing that that people come up with different ideas all along. But I I am a little disturbed now listening to the conversation that just because Representative Elder doesn't support the underlying bill, we don't invite him in to discuss the amendment that he has proposed. When we said yesterday that we were gonna invite him in to ask why he included this group, um, I just find this a little bit politically offensive. And that's all I'm gonna say because you know I've spoken on this topic before that um, we really need to have transparency about what we're voting on and I have no idea why he added this in. And I know that he was one of the swing voters in that committee. So I'm not really sure what happened in the course of that committee meeting, but I don't like it. So thank you for hearing me out. And, and that's that's fine. I just, from my perspective, it's, it's um, we really, in this work, we really try to not make it personal. And I think if we called someone in to, um, in this particular case, um, and that's just my feeling, that's my call. I'm just gonna go with that. And um, at this point, it's better. I think we're, we're satisfied with the information that we have and people can make their votes based on the information that we have on it. Representative Triana. Yeah, I mean, I, if Ways and Means Committee could have and maybe should have sent Representative Elder to our committee to explain this bill. They chose to send Representative Maslin, who 
did a relatively good job. He's in the business and um, he covered some ground that uh, we needed to know about how they came to their decision, whether we agree with it or not. So, I mean, you know, Ways and Means chose to send someone other than Representative Elder to explain the bill. And so I don't think we're excluding anyone. I think we follow the process as it generally happens. We listen to the person who is chosen by that committee to come and make a representation to our committee. Okay. Representative Hango. Yes, I beg to differ on that because um, if I were the author of an amendment and I were not invited in and one of you were invited in instead of me, I would take offense to that. So um, I'm not really sure where you're going with that, Representative Triano, but I guess we're gonna agree to disagree on this one. Thank you. Sure. Um, last note before we go to go watch Representative Triano lead the charges on judicial retention. Um, which if you've not gotten your, if you haven't gotten your ballots already, please let um, John Bloomer know so you can make sure you get your, um, and, and understand that the date on the ballots, he had said, get them in by March 25th. And then an email went out saying, no, 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 do it by the first. Um, I, I just wanna thank you everyone in this committee um, for the work that we've done on JRH two in particular, um, but also all of our work this year. We really, you know, having the opportunity to hear other people's work in the other committees yesterday was fascinating to me because, you know, we've been in our bubble here working on what's really quite a different bill than, than what the rest of us are working on. And it, on one hand, I felt like I was uh, coming up for air, you know, and saying, oh my God, look at all this money being thrown around and look at all this. this is great. This is, they've been able to, they've been able to help these folks and these folks and these folks. And um, we've been doing different work here. And, you know, we're, and, and I, I just, again, want to make sure I, you know, that I appreciate the work we've put into this um, and, and, and the other work that we've done this year, it really is, um, Top notch stuff, and it's and we take it at a different level. It seems sometimes, sometimes, not all the times. All of our bills aren't going to be like JRH two or H ninety six or anything like that. There's going to be a lot of like you know, should we do happy hour kind of bills. But um, uh, the uh, I just want to thank you all for for the work that you've done so far to get us to this point where where we're actually on the edge of voting on JRH two tomorrow. So. Um, Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you.